Nice. You know, I got to say out of the box, everything looks uh, pretty high quality. Howdy everyone, this is the Husky Centerline TS Weight Distributing Hitch and let me tell you right off the bat, it's an excellent product with a couple of little quirks that I think could use some improvement. Overall fit and finish out of the box is excellent. All parts have what looks to be a very durable hammered silver powder coat and everything appears well machined or forged. I personally went with four to 600 pound bars as my trailer clocks in at 4,500 pounds gross. So this range should slot nicely in that 10 to 15% tongue weight category. Uh, oh, and by the way, if your stickers ever end up rubbing off, you can still tell what size bars you have as they're embossed with their capacity, even though said embossing is a bit hard to read. Uh, the manufacturer estimates an install time of 90 to 120 minutes, and that may be accurate if you've got all the appropriate tools lined up. That said, even a well-stocked shop might be lacking a couple things. Here's what you'll need. A 27 millimeter or 1 and 1 16 deep well socket, a 29 millimeter or 1 and 1 8 inch regular socket, a giant torque wrench capable of 380 foot pounds. I had to rent this one as my largest, a half inch only went to 150, which by the way you'll also need, and then a run of the mill socket and wrench set for the smaller bolts. I'll go ahead and drop a link to the tools you'll need below. Use is greatly appreciated as always. We'll start this install by measuring from the ground to the top of the ball coupler and then recording that measurement for future reference. We're also going to need a reference measurement somewhere on the frame. Location should be close to the coupler. Before taking either of these, make sure your trailer is parallel to your driveway. I verified this by lowering both the front and back until they showed the same measurement to ground. Finally, we're going to measure the front and rear fender heights for future reference to gauge squat and make any necessary adjustments. Next up is to match the height of the ball to the height of the trailer coupler plus one inch. I measured a coupler height of 20 inches so I'm setting the ball height to 21. We also need to ensure the ball sits perpendicular to the ground. This is accomplished by rotating it up and then using some pins and spacers to set the angle. To be honest, I'm not sure why the ball assembly doesn't just move vertically up and down the hitch, but this is how they do it. Once the correct angle is achieved, we tighten the set screw and jam nut on the bottom. In preparation for tightening the two large bolts, we need to remove any space between the ball assembly and the hitch. This is accomplished with some J-shaped shims. After it was nice and snug, I temporarily tightened the bolts with the tools I had on hand. Uh, thought it would make more sense to ensure everything was properly adjusted before breaking out the mega torque wrench. Uh, it was now time to start working on the trailer side brackets. They come pre-assembled, so you'll need to remove the two halves for installation. Placement is dictated by the manufacturer. The center of the mounting holes should be between 28.5 and 30.5 inches away from the center of the ball coupler. Vertically, the top of the bracket, where the bars will rest, should be approximately at the same height as the bottom of the tension bars where they meet the hitch. Now, in preparation for some test fitting, we'll install the bars. They just slide into place and then are held there by a cotter pin. Uh, I can then back in and see how everything fits. Surprisingly, everything here actually uh, looks pretty well lined up. I'll double check some measurements, but uh, yeah, we're not looking bad. Now, to actually hitch everything up, we basically drop the coupler on the ball like normal, but then we raise it back up to relieve tension on the bars in preparation for snapping them in place. Temporarily, your truck will look a bit awkwardly rear high. With uh, the bars and brackets relatively close in height, we can snap them up using the included lifting tool. Should be pretty easy if you've got all your measurements correct. So after our initial setup here, I think we're a little over tensioned. If you'll notice, the almost back of the truck almost looks like it's sitting up a little like it makes sort of a triangle, a little convex con triangle. So I think I'm going to lower the brackets one notch. And after making that adjustment, we're sitting pretty, no pun intended. Uh, after we're happy with everything's relative placement, we need to tighten the 
ball assembly bolts down to 380 foot-pounds, which is actually a massive amount. Like I mentioned earlier, I had to rent this mega torque wrench to accomplish it. My half-inch one didn't come close in capacity. Even the people at the rental place jokingly asked the name of the ship I was working on. Now it's time for a little road test. Right here, I wanted to uh, show and let you listen to what it's like in motion, uh, especially during turns. Some people have said that creaking from the bars rubbing against the brackets can be unnerving, but I actually found they made very little noise. The very few creaks and groans I did hear was a small price to pay for the vast improvement in ride and overall confidence towing uh, with these versus nothing. So when I'm out here on a more level pad, I think the truck squat still looks really good. The trailer looks like it's sitting a little high. So basically it all becomes sort of obvious once everything is together here. Uh, basically the relative height of the brackets uh, versus uh, the hitch over there is what determines the tension on the bars. So if I want to lower the trailer without changing the tension on the bars, I kind of have to lower the bracket and the uh, head over there the same distance. So I'll probably, when I get home, I'll drop them each one more notch, which should level out the trailer without affecting the ride on the truck. I also want to point out that backing in with the style of weight distributing hitch is simple. In fact, no different than with nothing. Uh, unlike a sway bar, there's nothing to disconnect. Actually, I find it easier than with nothing, as my limited experience tells me the trailer is less likely to jackknife and overall feels more controlled. When it's time to remove the bars, we basically perform the hookup procedure in reverse, again raising the trailer to remove tension. Here's the difference between a lot of tension on the bars and not much at all. So yeah, overall a great product that I'm thrilled to have. Towing this trailer without weight distribution felt a little sketchy, despite being within the truck's rated capacity. Uh, with the addition of the Husky Center line, you obviously still feel the weight when accelerating and braking, but otherwise tend to forget you're hitched up. You no longer have the sways from wind, and you especially notice the change in ride, as the back end no longer feels extra bouncy with all that tongue weight back there. Still, I do wish they'd figure out an install method that doesn't call for such a ridiculous amount of torque. I almost wonder if they do that because they know a lot of people won't bother, and then in the event of an accident they could claim installation error. I know, a bit of a stretch, but 380 foot-pounds is kinda crazy. That's like heavy-duty truck axle torque. Just can't imagine three-quarter inch bolts actually need that much. But the manufacturer is the expert, so we'll stick with it. But yeah, uh, I think anyone towing over a couple thousand pounds, especially with a midsize like me, will really like the difference when towing with this hitch versus without.